Hey everybody, it's Katherine Whitaker tonight. Super excited. Sister Tracy Dugas from the Daughters of St. Paul, she lives in Louisiana, is going to be with us tonight. She is, they're also known as the Media Nuns, so you may have heard them that way. So very excited to have her on tonight, and there she is. There you are. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm Great. really good. Yes. I um, am so excited to have you on time. So I was just telling everybody that you are, the nickname for y'all is Media Nuns, but technically mm. you're the Daughters of St. Paul. But can you yeah. tell me, so why do y'all have S F S P behind your name? What does that stand that, for? Yeah. So that was, um, that's because we were founded in Italy. Okay. And so in Italian, Daughters of St. Paul is Filiae di San Paolo. Okay. Everything's so, in Italian, right? I know. All the good stuff. <laughs> Just so don't say you... that to my Cajun mama. <laughs> no, 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 no. So you, you're in New Orleans, is that right? Right now? No, I'm in Chicago. You're in Chicago now, but you're from Metairie. Is that right? I'm from Louisiana. I grew okay. up in St. Martinville, which is like south of Lafayette. Okay. I love the way, like, I can hear a little bit of that Cajun in oh, you. I love there. it. Mm -hmm. I like that. So how long have you been in Chicago? Since September of last year. Okay. Okay. So you've lived through a Chicago winter. You survived. Yes, I survived. Okay. Well, you know, the thing was, is that when I was first professed, I, uh, my first mission was Chicago. So oh. that was the first shock <laughs> of my life. <laughs> And, um, yeah, that's when I realized I did not have ac um, appropriate winter wear. Yes. So I was in New York City in February, and I was very nervous because Texans do not know winter. That is an unknown season to us. So I had to go get, like, a jacket. And the whole time, everybody that I was around was making fun of me. I was like, you don't understand. Like, if you come to Texas in July and August, and you come talk to me about summer wear. But when I'm in the in the winter in a state that actually has a winter, I feel like I need to load up on all the things. So. Yes, I know. I know. It's funny, but I have appropriate gear now. So you've been duly initiated into life yes, in Chicago. All is well. <laughs> so I love, so I had the chance to meet some daughters of St. Paul, probably at some parish missions, not really knowing who y'all were because y'all were always the one that had the books. But yes. it wasn't until I was in Alexandria, Virginia last fall. Um, Y'all were so kind. The store there and the sisters there hosted a book signing for me. It was beautiful. Great. And I got to see like what, like I got to see it transpire all in front of me. And it was so mm. beautiful. They're like, come with us and come upstairs. And so I had no idea that the bookstore was also where you lived yeah. and your apostolate. So yes. please share a little bit about how y'all became the media nuns and, and how you kind of came to claim that name, but also what that means in the ministry that y'all do. Sure. So, so we were actually, we're, we're kind of a, a young order in the, the big view of the, you know, Catholic orders and, and stuff. Right. So we were founded in 1915 okay. by um, a priest. He was a diocesan priest in Northern Italy. And he was just actually, he wasn't even a priest yet when he felt God was calling him to do something um, specifically for the people of the new century. And this was the night he, so he was in the seminary. Um, he was 16 years old and he was in prayer before the blessed sacrament with all the other seminarians. And he felt like God was really calling him forth to do something good for the people of the new century. And he didn't know what that was. He had no idea, but he, he felt that over time, he said, it was like, I was a half blind man, just kind of like feeling the walls and God just guided him step by step. And so over time it got clearer to, um, to him that St. Paul was actually the one who was founding us. And he was using Father James Alberione to do that. And so Father Alberione felt that if Paul were alive today, he would use the most modern, efficacious ways of doing what Paul did, which was 
share his passion for Jesus and his love and his gratitude for having been found by Jesus and saved by Jesus. Yeah. So, so we started out um, as printers. We, we published um, diocesan newspapers at first. Well, even before that, the sisters weren't even doing like media. They were sewing. They were sewing for, for the war, oh during the war. Um, wow. But anyway, our founder, that was the main idea is that media is just the tool that we use to make the message of the gospel touch the heart, touch the mind of the person and lead us to to a relationship with Christ and to being redeemed, letting him redeem us in all that we are. So, so, and I guess over time, you know, the whole hashtag thing um, yeah. <laughs> developed, you know, <clears throat> right. and, uh, and, and the, I don't know who first coined it, but it's sure stuck. So here it is. <laughs> well, I mean, what I love is that in this space, I mean, I think it's easy I mean, social media didn't really become a thing until about the last 10, 15 years. And certainly right. the last seven or eight years, it's really become a thing. Mm -hmm. But I think you, it's easy to get sucked into the vortex of the ugliness of this space. Yes, yes. And I love that y'all are in this space because I think it kind of turns my heart back to where it needs to be. Like, mm -hmm. I see your posts or I see... Um, I don't know, I see your joy in this space and it reminds me, okay, there is good in this space. Um, as Pope Francis says, you know, we're called to evangelize in this space. And I love how y'all are such good reminders and good leaders for those of us who are lay people that, I mean, there, there's a possibility to find Jesus in this space. And I think Amen. you keep turning people's heads back towards that. And I'm deeply grateful that so many of y'all oh. are here instead of I know that there are lots of ways that you can serve, but I think that this mm -hmm. is a real calling for y'all. Yes. But, but you do some amazing art. So your background oh. is in, I know my girls are like, she's a sister. And I said, yes. I love doing it. You know, it's really, it's really <clears throat> been such a great um, journey. Uh, the whole art part of things. I mean, I, you're, I've always been artistic. That's always been a part of who I am. Um, and when I enter the community, um, I remember I was I was a freshman in college, so I had done, you know, basic art classes. And um, and when I entered, I was like, you know, am I going to get to do use my art? I mean, these are yeah. media nuns, but I didn't want to presume on it. And the sisters, they were also very sober because the idea is that when you're discerning your vocation, you're not you're not choosing an order because it fits your skill set. You know, that's a good. Yeah. Yeah. So even though You're, you know, you didn't give them your resume and say like, how does this well, speak to y'all? No. And, and it was cute because it was like, I think it was after a year that I was in the convent. Um, the director of the design department said to me, well, she said to me through my formator, basically, um, when you come back from being home on vacation, could you bring your, your stuff that you worked on, you know, during school? And I was like, sure. <laughs> Oh man. So I got to show her like my little, my little collection of things. And, um, and then I began working in the design department, but I mean, my, my actual use of art was, was more, um, in that, in design, you know, so I would do yeah. design work, like help cover, create covers of books and whatever. And it wasn't until I would say about maybe three or four years ago that I got a letter in the mail and the writer of the letter wrote my name beautifully and my address beautifully on the on the envelope yeah it was so refreshing and i remembered like all through my my you know life i would have this special admiration for beautiful writing yeah. and um so then i that was about the same time that i started you know posting things on instagram and i started to follow uh letter people that did lettering yeah. And I would watch their videos like like a hawk, <laughs> you know. You like, me too. Watch it, watch it again. <clears throat> yes. Watch it again. Yeah, watch more. Again, you know? <clears throat> yes. <laughs> so, um, so that's kind of like how I learned. I just started. Right. I just started writing, and I used um, Crayola broad tip mar markers, 
And I tell people those are the best to start with. I was getting ready to ask you what your like what's your go-to. That was my big first one. Okay. Now I would say my second one, and I have them right here because I'm never too far without my markers close by. But these little funky things Ooh, are, those are um, fun. they are fun because they have some really neat tips. Uh, so they really let you do like a like like, like that. brush strokes. Yes. You know the heavy down and the. Light you were up. like you were speaking my language like I was in agriculture but then I got sucked into doing design work and I had to teach myself how to do it so I learned page maker and then in design and I just oh. my dad was a fine arts major in college and so it's just part of my brain and so I saw your oh. stuff and I was oh. like oh I need to know her because I'm <laughs> digging I'm digging what you do it's so I mean I love that you have the chance to use your gifts I mean that you found this order that you discerned this order and then God mm -hmm. knew all along one way yeah. that you were going to be able to serve the religious sisters. It's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. And it's so beautiful because I always say, you know, life is like life is seasons, you know, it's a season yeah. of this and a season of that. And, um, but the lettering has really been a, like a beautiful way of meditating for me. Oh. Um, and that's kind of my practice. Like I come downstairs in my PJs and I no, but we gotta go. We're gonna come back to that. Okay. You keep talking. Okay, we're yeah. gonna come back to that. Yeah. Do we wear PJs? Um, yes. Yeah, so we'll uh, come back to that. <laughs> so I come down and I get my coffee and then I just start ruminating, like looking at the reading and, and asking the Holy oh. Spirit, like, you know, for my prayer in the day before, like what's really been like giving, like been like a source of life or a source of insight or a challenge. And, um, and normally something will pop up and, and I just like, start imagining in my head what I might do and then by the time I'm fit you know fit for public consumption you know where am I all I got my clothes on um <laughs> I I sit down or I stand up I have a standing desk and um, I find that that's the best way because with lettering kind of like calligraphy there's a lot in the wrist more than the hand yeah. like sometimes our hands a little doesn't have the right strokey flow whatever you call it I don't know the technical terms no anyways. I hear you but that's why architects have standing desks for the same reason okay. ah. so my, my dad's in construction so same thing like they have the standing desk so they have the ability to use their hands the way they need to use awesome. them awesome I didn't realize that so, but yeah. I love but but I love that that you're able to take something that most of us probably take for granted and that you're mm -hmm. able to turn that into a way to pray and yeah. a way to meditate with Jesus I mean that's that's yes. really beautiful. And as a special treat for you all, I very well might show you my quote wall. Oh, but um, for now. All right. So let's go back to the pajamas. Let's talk about the pajamas. Okay. <laughs> so do sisters wear pajamas? Well, I do. Um, some like regular, like regular pajamas or like sister yeah. pajamas? No, regular. not sister pajamas. There's, <laughs> I don't think there's a such thing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't have sisters. you don't have like a, a habit that's also pajamas yeah it's just no. you can okay <laughs> so do you wear uh, your veil when you go to bed nope no okay no so so that was another thing that actually kind of drew me to the sisters was their kind of um how would you put it like obviously we, we chose to as a community in the united states because we have we're international Okay. So we are we are present in 52 different nations. So not every daughter of St. Paul throughout the world wears the same thing. Some of our sisters okay. in other countries wear what's what's symbolic of a of a consecrated woman for their culture. Okay. So in India, the sisters wear a a peach colored sari because and it's it's not got ornaments on it. It's right. just plain. Okay. And that's a sign to their people that they are consecrated to God. And then the other, you know, some of the sisters in Africa, different parts of Africa, some wear the habit that we wear with the vest and the veil. Sometimes we get a little, dis, you know, people get a little confused if we're in an airport and they might think that we work for the airline because of the vest, I think. We try to be nice. And if we know where the gate is, we just direct. You're like, to good luck with your flight. God bless you. <laughs> Exits are forward and aft, you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's fascinating though, because I'm thinking that if you're a part of an order and, and like in the United States, if you wear a habit, that that would be the same everywhere. But that's fascinating that that's not always the case. 
Right. But it, no, it depends yeah. on where you live. Okay. One of the sisters is laughing right now. Sister Magdalena. <laughs> she thinks that's funny because it's true. It's really funny. But, um, oh my God. but um, we, we have, you know, chosen to wear this and, and I always kind of say that it's sort of like, you know, we're God's audio visual. We get to be mm -hmm. out in the world and people get least reminded yeah. that, wow, they, there still is this call where women give everything to the Lord and, you know, point to, to the presence of God, even now in this culture today. And, um, and, you know, the veil is, is reminiscent. It, and it also shows that spousal quality yeah. of our vocation that we are um, sp a spouse to the Lord and that we have, we forego the marriage of this world to point everyone to the marriage that we're all called to in heaven with the Lord. And so in a way we get to wear this, you know, veil, our wedding veil, um, to show that all of us are made for heaven. That's beautiful. I, I think one thing that I love, particularly about your order of sisters is that I feel like y'all are very approachable. And maybe that's because we share some of the same mm. uh, secular world commonalities. Mm -hmm. But also, I feel like you are, I don't know what it is about sisters, I've said this before, like y'all have like this, it's like this glow, this, this um, mm. joy that like permeates from you. And, mm. and maybe it's because you are where you're supposed to be. I mean, you are married to Jesus. But it is undeniable. Every sister that I've ever met, but particularly y'all have mm. this aura about you that like when I'm around you, I think, I can still joke with you and still do things with you, but I also feel like you're always directing me back towards Jesus. And I think that mm -hmm. is an undeniable quality of a sister that is so engaging. But yet, I mean, I think there's some people, I was just talking to some neighbors um, and most of them are not Catholic. And one thing that they said is, um, you know, I always think like when I hear about sister's backstory, like they didn't all come from super religious families or super pious, mm -hmm. like they were real people. Mm -hmm. And then they became sisters. So one part of your vocation story that I want to point out, because I loved it, is you had a relationship with a Baptist boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And I want to know about this relationship because of what you said and like what that relationship allowed you to see. As a, as a former Protestant, I found it fascinating and, yeah. and I could relate to that. So tell us about your Baptist boyfriend. <laughs> Okie dokie. <laughs> so, so yeah, he was, um, he was someone that I actually saw at a very young age, um, I was, I think, 12 oh. when I first saw him. I was standing next to my social studies project, and I didn't go to the same school that he went to, but he, we were at some kind of regional, like, if you, if you get certain amount of points or whatever, you get to move up to the regional thing. So yeah. I was standing there by my, by my project, and, um, and yeah, he walked by, and I thought, wow, he's oh. beautiful. And so I basically just sort of kept my, my antenna was always up. Like if he was anywhere around, ding, we're all familiar. I just yeah. knew, you know what I'm the talking about? The girls on here are like, we know about this. Yes. Oh yeah. So, so when I was around 16, um, his circle of friends were kind of around my circle of friends and we got to be friends. And then lo and behold, we started dating. Now, what was interesting was all of his friends were Catholic. And, and he was the lone Baptist. And he was one of a few. One of you. There okay. were a few, right? And, um, but we were, at that time, um, a lot of his friends were doing uh, retreats. And, um, and so that's another thing that, that really started to, I think, was moving in his life. So anyway, when we ended up going on a couple of dates, <clears throat> at a certain point, we were chatting and he was telling me about um, how he talked to Jesus. And for me, you know, in my idea, like prayer was all about religion. Like you say your prayers right. and you, you know, say the rosary and you go to mass and you say prayers there. But as he talked, I start. it was like a light came on and I realized prayer was about relationship. And I mean, he was just simply sharing. His dad was a farmer and he would just, you know, plow and pray. <laughs> That's a good and, place to do it. Uh, 
Yeah. And I mean, some of it was like, he said, I just listen to like Christian music and if it inspires something. Uh, but I remember being so fascinated. And I was like, well, you talk, you talk to Jesus. He's like, yeah. And I was like, does he talk to you? You know, <laughs> like, what is what he saying you to you? <laughs> I know. I wanted to know. But the cool thing about it for me was that it really planted a seed that was very deep in me, a desire. Like as much as I like this guy, I realized, wow, I had such a desire to know Jesus like he knew him to where I could have a conversation with the Lord. So I remember, I don't know if it was that night or no, not long after, um, I remember coming home from our time together, going, waking my mom up, telling her I'm home. Yeah. And then I went back into the living room where we had, it was just a, sort of this open space. I knelt down in the middle of the floor and I said, Jesus, I want to talk to you too. Oh. And that was probably one of my first like spontaneous prayers wow. that I ever prayed. And the Lord wow. took me on a journey and um and here you are yeah here i am <laughs> so what what was it that drew you to the daughters of saint paul i mean i know that there are as i'm learning because so i have to pledge my i have to hold up my convert card here and say like i had no idea that I there know. were so many orders of sisters yeah. but what was it that drew you to this particular order like i mean i know that you have the ability to use your fine art degree in this but none of that you knew obviously mm -hmm. at the time that you oh, were thinking yeah, about yeah. it so what was it about this particular that you said, that's maybe one that I want to know more about? Yeah, well, people did um, try to help me out because I just started telling certain people, not everybody, sure. not my parents, not guys, you know, but um, anyway, not that Baptist boyfriend. No, <laughs> no I didn't tell him. <laughs> um, but I just started to kind of do a little research. And I remember a few people were like, oh, well, you need to talk to and they would name like maybe the vocation director in the diocese. And I remember, I don't know how I got it, but I got this book and it doesn't exist now. I don't think oh. maybe it does, but it lists all the religious orders like that have a little oh. space in that book. Oh my gosh. I was like, <laughs> like look through it. I'm done. I can't do this. It's not going to happen. It's you know, like looking so through it. It's like looking through a college book, right? Like how yeah. many colleges can I go I to? I had no, so I was so, I think, you know, the enemy can use things like that to really discourage you. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, no, this is not for me. And, um, but the desire, um, the desire to really know Jesus was still so strong, so undeniable. And I did not think that, you know, at first, I didn't think I was made for religious life because I, I saw a nun in a movie and I remember thinking, that's so cool. Nuns are cool. Are there still nuns around? You know, like I didn't even They still know. make those? I know. And, um, and so that started me wondering about them. And then I went to a retreat where a girl was joining a, a community and I was like, I need to talk to this girl. So I talked to her, but I'm hiding from my friends. You well, thought I saying, maybe I thought, well, about three weeks later, I get a phone call and it was a girl that I never met really, but she saw me talking to the almost none. Mm -hmm. The almost her, none. Right. And her parents wanted her to visit a convent before she graduated high school. And she goes, I really don't, I'm really not interested. But she said, you want to come? I need a, it's I was, like a bathroom buddy. Like you need someone to come with you. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I'm like, no, I don't want to go. I don't know who you are. You might be some kind of crazy person, you know? <laughs> and, uh, but anyway, I gave every possible reason why I could not go. And then in the end, somehow I agreed to go. And when we drove up, we drove up to Pauline Books and Media in Metairie, Louisiana. And I was like, are we stopping at the store before we go to the monastery? They were like, nope, this, this is, is it. Convent. I was like, this is so weird. And then the nuns were very talkative and they're giving me like, do you want some Coke? I was like, do nuns drink Coke? 
like everything was totally jarring. I'm You're like, like, my mom, you wear pajamas, you drink Coke. <laughs> like, I don't even know what to do with y'all. Oh I gosh. know. But let me tell you, when I sat down and actually had like, was around the sisters, like when you said that whole thing about approachableness, yeah. um, like I could see that the sisters were each so unique, even though they all wore the same clothes. Yeah. I tell I tell people my little joke is we all shop at the same store. You know? <laughs> well, as one of but, our uh, little kindergartners said she saw one of the sisters at her school and she looked at the other sister and she said, she stole your clothes. So yeah. they yeah. see so funny. kids are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, but like that, what I remember feeling was seeing that their personalities were so intact yeah. and they were so themselves and that joy yeah. of just being happy to be with me and interested mm -hmm. in me. And I just remember feeling like, I don't know if this is for me, but I like these people. Like That's, I a, that's a great home. point. I mean, that, yeah. that you don't, that you don't surrender who you are, but that you become more fully who God desires for you to be. I yep. think that's, maybe that's what some people, I mean, I had a lot of questions of people saying like, are there things that you regret giving up? Or was it hard to leave what traditionally we see as womanhood of getting married mm -hmm. and having babies having and having babies. a family? Yep. And so I think, I mean, you speak so beautifully to the point that it, it's not like the plan B, like, Hey, I couldn't get married. I couldn't have children. So I guess I'll be a sister. Like so, you, you mm -hmm. share it so beautifully that it's the plan A because it's what God mm -hmm. desired for you. Mm -hmm. So I just, that's so beautiful that, that you could see their individual personalities. I say, so our kids go to Catholic school and it's easier for me to pick them out when they're all in uniform, because when they're not in uniform, I'm like, who is that? Because I see <laughs> their faces. Like I'm not uh, looking at what they're wearing, but I see their yeah. faces. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Beautiful. So that, but I think sisters are very much the same way. And like, man, I can spot you, but your personality, your demeanor, mm -hmm. what you love mm -hmm. to talk about or how you approach just meeting people. It's such a joy. I love it. So how did you, I guess, was it hard when you decided, yes, I want to be, I want to go into the convent and discern that life. Was that hard to make the break from what everybody else was doing and go into the sisterhood? Like, what was that like for you? You know, yeah, it sort of kind of amazes me that, that I did do what I did when I did it because I did not have a little, like I wasn't a renegade. Like I, I didn't have plans that I was going to leave Louisiana. Um, that was not what I was planning for. I wasn't planning though much. Um, uh, I remember like all my friends. Would... Oh, uh oh. There we are. Did I? Did I... There you are. Did I I out? Think we're... No, we're good. You're good. Keep going. Am That's I, Satan. He tries here? to do that every time. You're good. Okay. You're good. Um, you know, like my friends, you know, my friends were, were very, you know, they forward thinkers. And, and I was like, all I want is a job at the mall so that I get a discount at the gap. <laughs> like that was it. Like, That's I awesome. didn't care. Like I, I, I wasn't thinking about bettering the world or anything like that. But then the Lord, you know, it's almost like the seas were parted and he dropped religious life into yeah. my heart. And it was like, then my, then my gumption came up, I think. Then my courage rose up. Oh. And, um, and so did I have a hard time leaving things? I think one of the things that really, really, really helped me was that the sisters made it really clear that my discernment was discerning um, each step and like that their, their desire was that I would hear from God and do what God wanted. Even if like, you know, like I was still in discernment. Right. And so I felt that freedom to apply myself fully to what 
I was setting out to do, but like I, they weren't locking the door behind me. Right. You know, it, it wasn't like the, oh. it wasn't like the hard sell, like, um, right. you must do this or, you know, we're not going to let you leave. We're going to lock the door and you have to stay forever. Just said, but I, I agree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, Keep going. Keep going. Um, so, so that freedom, I think, allowed me to just sort of take it as it came. And, um, yeah. and so there were things, though, that I really had struggles with. Um, you know, even just realizing that it was going to call forth for me a lot of self-awareness. And as a 19-year-old young lady, yeah. <laughs> okay. no comprendo. Por favor, you know, right. Like, Yo no hablo personal <laughs> knowledge. <laughs> yeah. What is that? What means um, this? Yeah. I don't know what that is. So little lights would come on and I'd be like, oh, oh, really? <laughs> like, we're going to have to like know more about ourselves, like work ourselves, you know? Um, but it was like, God is so good. I mean, he made us. Yeah. And are, are the things that are going to make us better people at the right time, in the right way, yeah. with the right people around you yeah. to help you do that. Yeah. You know? I know we sometimes think that maybe we're like, this is our personal journey. Thank you very much. I have my personal journey to Jesus. But we forget that there are a lot of people that he sends us along the way as like checkpoints. Yes. Like, I'm going to send you this person. And I'm going to reveal this. That is so beautiful. I mean, it wasn't just you choosing the religious life, but it was all those people, just like it wasn't just me choosing to get married. It was all those people along the way. I love that analogy. That's yeah. so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Oh, my yeah. gosh. I have like 8,000 yeah. questions for you, but I'm looking at the clock and I'm like, I can't keep you much longer. Sister, this was so. Okay. I mean, I love you I'm a big talker. It... I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, 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 no. That you, everything that you said was beautiful. Come on, Wi-Fi. Um, there we go. It's like in and out. So maybe that's a good, a good sign to. Um, so one thing that I wanted to ask you is um, if there's. Oh, are you? Can you hear me? Are we good? No, I hear you. I hear are we you. good? I hear you. Oh, you hear me. Okay. So what's one way for yes. the people that w are watching this now and the people that watch this later? Like, what's one way that we can pray for you, Sister Tracy? Pray for me? Yes. I want to be a saint. So pray that I can become a saint. And I, I mean that. that with all my heart. You can be that. What would you be the patron saint of? Lettering. I was getting ready to say that, but I didn't <laughs> want to put words in your mouth. So Markers. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's a beautiful prayer request. Absolutely. We will yeah. definitely pray for that. Would you mind ending us with a prayer? Sure, sure. Oh, sure. It just felt like it flew by. <laughs> I know. I'm like, how did it go by that fast? Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes. God bless everybody who's with us. Okay, we're going to pray together. So we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, you want us to be close, close, close to your heart. So, Lord, we just pray tonight that all the things that we hold in our life, all the things that we hold in our thoughts, all the people that we care about, that we can allow ourselves to trust that you have everything under control. You have absolute care for us. You will never abandon us. And your word is where we find the expression of your heart. So, Lord, we pray that you give us a hunger, a hunger to hear from you, a hunger to seek you, to never give up, to never stop seeking, to always go deeper, to always go farther into your heart and into your love for us. We also pray, Lord, that through our conversion of heart, that our world will be changed so that we can be a society of saints. And we ask you, Mother Mary, Queen of Apostles, 
to make us apostles, to be sent in the name of Jesus, to do even more than what he did, to speak your word, to give hope, to heal, to help, to love. And all this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh my gosh. That was beautiful. Um, Sister Tracy, th- we are going to do this. First of all, we're going to do this again. And thank you so much for being so generous with your heart and generous with your time. And thank you for the ministry that you do. This space needs you because you keep pointing us to the person that matters the most. So thank you for that gift. Amen. All right. Thank Have you. a beautiful evening. Thank you. Love you of all. Course. God bless you. Yes. Bye, sister. All right. Okay. Good night.